Hello, my friends. Glad to see you made it. We are gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God, He is alive. My friends, let's start that prayer and let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I've come to you today for, for wisdom and understanding. Lord, you say, seek and you shall find. We come seeking for your kingdom, your glory, and how we can be a part of that. Gracious God, protect us throughout this life. Protect our homes. I ask you to bless anyone who's watching this video. Their homes, their families. I ask you to, to guide each and every one of us in ways that lead straight to you, O oh Lord. Deliver us from the evil. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us. Forgive us all. We are weak, but, but you, oh God, you are strong. And we come here today for that strength. Amen. My friends, I want to talk to you about Jesus, what he did, and what he, what he wants from us, and what he has done done for us, his children. And, you know, I want to talk about, let's go to a read real quick, and I want to show you something, and talk about, you know, like darkness, and, and light, and, and the things that God wants us to do. You know, Jesus says that not only there was our righteousness needed to surpass, surpass that of, of the Pharisees, and the teachers of the law, you know, and we need to be holy. Some of his teachings were quite tough because even, even the teachers of the law and the Pharisees couldn't handle his teachings. They're too tough. I mean, we got to actually do this stuff. We can't just sit back and, and reap the benefits, reap the rewards. And that's the thing, you know, with the, the, the pearl in the field, or, or the finding a fine pearl, or the treasure in the field, you know. What's, it, what's this worth? And what's your worth? And that's the thing. Unbelievers, or, or people struggling, wrestling with God, they're worth, and, and you'll see it, go to go to work, and listen to the conversations, or whatever, or at your home, or wherever you may be. Eavesdrop at the restaurant. And you'll see what conversation dominates your life. And it's usually work. What, what did you do today at work? Why work? Because that gives me worth. You know, where, where does the inside my worth come from? I need to be worth something to the world. That's what drives our our. our our value of wages for our, our money to from jobs. Nobody wants minimum wage because, you know, how worthless is that? You know, I have to show you that, that I am worth something. And minimum wage? Well, not worth that. You know, I'm worth 12 bucks an hour. No, 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 12 bucks. Ah, come on. I am worth Fifty dollars an hour, and and it's not like that, but it is, because then we talk about our stuff and where our worth, and then we look at it and well, you know, and look what I bought with my money and my worth and what I got from my job or or my work. Got a new car, check it out. You know, so now we're not talking about work anymore. We're talking about what where our worth came from, work. And where our worth, how it can be seen. Cars, homes, our clothing, our perfume. I mean, maybe we think that that word, you know, we need to find worth from, from you, another person. Ah, I want to smell good. I want to look good. So, so when you look at me and you see me, I have worth. See, I'm worth something. I'm valuable. But, but how much value is our eternal life? 
you know, a lot of times we, we focus here on earth. Finding worth, finding value for from people in our surroundings. But doesn't Jesus say, how much more valuable are, are you to God than, than all those things? You know, and that's the thing like Jesus says, you know. Hey, if your right foot causes you to sin, cut it off. Well, remember back in those days, they don't have shoes. So it's basically what he's saying is if the shoe fits, take it off and put on these shoes. These iron shoes. And he says, you know, this is a narrow gate. This is a tough walk. Easy and wide is the walk to destruction. Easy. But the walk to heaven is a narrow walk. It's a tough walk. You need iron shoes for this walk. It's a long journey. Regular shoes aren't going to make the journey. Got to have iron shoes made of iron, brass. And, and why? That's because it's so tough to, to, to break down our worth, separating our worth from the world. And having our worth be from God. We're worth something to God. You know, it's kind of like working for free. Donating your time. Sometimes we get so involved in wanting to donate all our money. But, but even then they can repay you for that. Saying thank you or, or whatever. But, but to donate our time. Our bodies. Our life. Something that can never be repaid. And sometimes we have problems finding worth in that. Working at the local food banks and stuff. And then you say, well, you're just telling us what to do. God costs something. No, God costs, it's free. The eternal life is free for all. Where do you want to spend it? You know, and it's what he says. How, how dark is the darkness in you? Can the light overcome darkness? Can, can your love overcome it? The, the desires of the world. Can we wrap our mind around having our, our very being, being worth something, without having a, a, a earthly reward? You know. And that's the thing, that that light, that love is, should be stored up in us somewhere. Waiting to blast out to where, you know, you look out into the world and you see violence and all the pains and the sufferings. And at some point, you, don't you just go like, my God, I can't stand it anymore. I can't stand it anymore. I want to do something. I don't know what to do, but I want to do something, God. And, and so we pray. And we ask God to help us and save the world. Do something. Save, save these kids. Oh, come on, God. And then we sit back and wait. And nothing happens. But, but Jesus came to give us power. And the Holy Spirit is power and boldness. He gave us the, the power to overcome, you know, and, and that's the thing. We, we, need, we need to take recognition of that power of love, the power God gave us. And you say, what do you mean? What is that like? And it's like taking over the, the situations wherever you are, you know, maybe a negative person comes in and, and you're going to take power over that negativity in that thing, but by stopping it right there and saying, hey, I'm a child of the Most High, and we're going to, God, come, and we're going to take over and clean up this situation right here in front of us. In prayer. And, and now that I, I pray, and I know God is, is with me, ready and waiting to, to enable us, to give us the strength, the courage, the confidence, to go over to that negative person and say, hey, my friend, what's wrong? You know, to, to, to have that love, to, to diffuse the situation. Love. 
you know, sometimes maybe we really forget 20 minutes ago. We don't know where that person may have been. And some great thing happened and got them all agitated. And what happened? What's wrong? How can I help you? Do you need a friend? You know, maybe we don't need to poke them in, the, in, in their sore spot, you know, like, hey, you jerk, would you just shut up? How about, what's wrong? What's going on? How can I help you? Taking that, that, that control and that power that God gives us. Love conquers all things. See, seeing a bully or somebody trying to control your, your, all your work and everything in your place and really agitating you because they just got to have control over all stuff because their worth comes from their control over us or you or whoever. And we got to pray to God. God, come, help, let's go. Let's take control. My friend, do you know how much Jesus loves you? You never thought about him before. You know? And that's the thing. It all comes back to our relationship with God. Many people say, ah, oh, you gotta obey, obey. All, every word, every letter of the Bible. And I don't want you to know that's Jesus. <laughs> As he's, you know, they have the high priest. And he has the coat of many colors, and he had this beautiful coat thing, and the shroud, and only the highest priest of the temple, a priest of the whatever their time, kind of like a pope in their day, but the high priest, and he'd have this thing, and a nice little hat, and, or not in that hat, also it would have the name of Yahweh, or, or whatever, the unspeakable name of, of God. And then they'd have the 12 stones right there on, on that thing. Representing like the 12 tribes and the descendants of Israel in this nation. And that's Jesus. Jesus is that coat. He, he has made us, each one of us, gives us the ability to be priests, like the high priest. He is the high priest, he's that coat. And that's the thing, to be covered not only in the blood of the Lamb for salvation, but He gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is that coat. Be clothed in that coat, which gives you the power and the confidence to have confidence and in your prayers to know. Jesus Christ is our High Priest, is our God. We're waiting and ready to answer our prayers. He says, ask! And you'll receive. You know, sometimes we, we ask God and we don't believe we received it. But we have. We need to take hold of that power God gives to us. And that power comes through love. I mean, to give a, a poor person like 10 bucks or have you ever tried giving them like 200? Make, make them cry. Because the, the, the amount of love he gave to them was so overwhelming, they, had, they couldn't believe it. I tell you, the, the feeling this thing will come into you at that moment when they're grateful beyond, beyond anything you've seen. To see grown men cry because of how grateful they are. That somebody would see them as being worth something. Being worth something. And they are. We're worth so much to God. He bought the whole field. Bought and paid for us. Sometimes we don't think that they have that same worth. That, that we do in the eyes of God. We don't want to use these people to judge us. But we can see that they're broken and they have a need for, for God. And He's empowered us. He's given us a gift. He's blessed us. 
You know, that's the thing when you're out there at the, if you ever gone to a food bank and maybe we always see and look at the, what we don't have. Well, I don't have what he has because, you know, look what he's worth. I, I got, I'm worth that, ain't I? I mean, what's wrong with me that I'm not worth a, a brand new car? I got a piece of junk. Oh, I don't even have a car. I'm Chevrolet. And, and what about that? We don't need to find our worth from, from their stuff. And that's the thing at the food bank when you're there and, and you're helping out people who are just totally broke down and have nothing. But they need help. Nobody will support them. They're hurt. Very ashamed to go to the food bank and, and very down and out, depressed. But after speaking to them and talking to them, and how do you spread the gospel? Hey, how are you today? Are you okay? I don't really have money, but I'll be your friend. How are you? Are you all right? You got a place to stay? Can I pray for you? And then you come home and realize, after speaking to them, these people is good people. And they love. And that could be your mother, your father, out there, all alone. And you come home and look around and go, what the hell did I do to deserve all the blessings? And they don't. Why? Why don't they? Maybe it's because of us to see no worth in them. I don't have, no, there's no worth in my time to give to you. But I tell you, a, a great ex, a spiritual experience will happen to you if you try it, if you did it, if you loved on these people, on people that, that have no love. There, some of them are widows and they don't have friends or family or no one to take care of them. And that's how they get to their spot. Their bodies break down, they get old, you can't work forever. We're not slaves, we're human beings. And we have worth. We have worth in the eyes of God. To, to love God is to love Jesus Christ because God, Jesus Christ is the love of God. God spoke, everything came to me. Jesus Christ is that word he spoke. And we got to be careful because there are many Jesuses in the world today. Believe in, in the Jesus of, of the Bible, in the Holy Bible, and, and the Jesus, uh, whatever, James King Version, whatever. It, Yeshua, the Messiah. There's only one Yeshua. There's many Jesuses, but we believe in the Jewish Jesus, uh, uh, Yeshua. That's the thing, that, that thing there, that unspeakable name. And, and that's the thing, Jesus came and he said, before Abraham was, I am. Before the worlds were made, I am. Jesus says that, 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 and if you go through the Bible, you'll see that Yeshua and Yahweh, they take the vowels out or whatever and just have the consonants there, and it's the same. You put in the different vowels, and this is what they do. The high priest would go into the holies of holies, into this tent thing inside their temple and only that one priest could go there and he'd make the sacrifice they take the blood make that sacrifice from the animal and there it would be a living sacrifice for your sins as your sins went on to that animal as they sacrificed it or killed it there your sins would die with that animal and then you could go throughout the rest of the year and they do this once a year. Take that blood which represented your blood and your sins and what you deserved for your sins and you put it on that animal and they take that blood to the holies of holies and there at the Ark of the Covenant and they sprinkle at the mercy seat that, that blood. 
And then for you, your families, and your sins, they would speak the unspeakable name of God. He'd say Yahweh. I am in Yeshua. The hand and the nail. And they'd say, look, I am the hand and the nail. Jesus Christ came, Thomas, stick your hand in my hole, your finger, for I am that hand with the nail. He is there and takes away the sins for us. Jesus Christ is that atonement for the sins. And the gift he gives you is that dress, that, that coat of many colors. Because we're a nation of priests and prophets and apostles and, and lovers and believers and, and men and women who love Jesus Christ. To love Jesus Christ, we love the Word of God. The Word of God is love each other as you would yourself. It is Jesus Christ showed you how much worth you have. You're worth so much. He gave his life for our sins. Forgive. Forgive just as Jesus forgave us. You know, living by the law isn't necessary, necessarily like a, a, a commandment that if you don't obey every letter of the law and all these, you know, rituals, it's not about the rituals. It's all summed up in, in that. Love each other. The will of God our Father is we would love each other. And all His children, the sons and women of God, do.